Public service announcement. Nina Turner's election is about a week away. A little more than a week away by the time you see this video. But now is the time to get involved if you haven't, because guess what? Another poll was just released, and it confirms what the other polls have found. That the race between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown is indeed tightening. So as Julia Manchester of The Hill explains, Democratic candidate for Ohio's 11th Congressional District, Chantel Brown, appears to be gaining ground on frontrunner Nina Turner in the race's Democratic primary, according to a new poll. 41% of likely primary voters back Turner in the poll, while 36% threw their support behind Brown. The poll, which has a margin of error of plus or minus 4.9 percentage points, was conducted by the Melman Group for the Democratic Majority for Israel PAC. The group has endorsed Brown and has poured money into to television advertising ahead of the race. The poll is the latest to show a tightening race between Turner and Brown. An internal poll from Brown's campaign showed Turner leading 43% to 36%, marking a 26-point jump for Brown since April. Meanwhile, another recent poll from the Washington Free Beacon showed Turner and Brown tied at 33%. Brown's allies have attributed her jump in the polls to increased spending and advertising on their side of the race. And when it comes to that last part, I agree. I think that Chantel Brown's allies are correct. The reason why she is jumping so quickly in the polls is because of all of this spending. And there's a lot of groups spending money against Nina Turner. A lot of it is dark money, but what we know about where we can trace the money, it is all nefarious individuals. So for example, as Benjamin Dixon reports, Third Way, the pro-corporate right-wing Democratic group, has spent $250,000 fighting Nina Turner. That's a quarter of a million dollars to defeat one congressional candidate. The pro-Israeli DMFI PAC has bankrolled Chantel Brown. We've known about this. I've talked about this before. But guess who's bankrolling them? Well, it's an oil and gas heir who poured over a million dollars into DMFI. And a lot of these super PACs, they have money and we don't even know where it came from. So there could be a lot of other nefarious individuals behind these groups that is uh, absolutely bankrolling Chantel Brown. In fact, I'd say there, there's definitely shady individuals, billionaires and oligarchs who are fighting against Nina Turner. And I just want to put this into perspective for you. So when an internal poll from Nina Turner's campaign was released in May showing that she had a 35-point lead. At that point, if the establishment basically threw their hands up and said, look, this is hopeless, Nina Turner's going to get this seat, um, they wouldn't be wrong, right? Because to make up a 35-point deficit, that requires a lot of resources and energy. But the Democratic Party establishment and the super PACs decided, you know what? To defeat Nina Turner, it's worth it. It's worth spending all of this money, dedicating all of this time into defeating Nina Turner because that's how much of a threat she is. With these types of enemies, that tells you exactly why Nina Turner needs to be elected to Congress. Because if all of these folks fear Nina Turner this much, if they're dedicating this much time in a district that is overwhelmingly Democrat-leaning, I mean, that goes to show you that Nina Turner is someone who we want on our side in the ring, fighting for us in Congress. And Chantel Brown is incredibly desperate because when she was behind, because there's almost no grassroots enthusiasm for her in that district, she practically begged super PACs to jump in and support her campaign. They they did do that. She's been caught faking endorsements. I don't know if she still have, has this up, but if you go to her endorsement page, there's a picture of her and Barack Obama to subtly suggest that Obama jumped in to endorse her when that's not actually the case. I wouldn't be surprised if Obama did want to endorse her, but she's trying to make it seem as if she has the endorsement of Barack Obama. And this is a really sleazy tactic to do because she knows that this district is heavily Democratic Party leading. So to have Obama's endorsement is is basically a very, very big thing. So she's trying to make it seem as if Obama endorsed her, and then she faked endorsements from other individuals within that district. And to make matters worse, to make up for the fact that there's almost no real enthusiasm for her, she has uh, what appears to be fake applause sound effects being uh, blasted through speakers to make it seem as if, you know, when, when you watch it online, she has a bigger crowd of support then there is an actuality, but they're, you're going to see here in this clip that I'm about to show you, they're going to cut to a clip of the crowd and there's like a couple of people clapping, but you could hear this like almost thunderous applause. It, it's it's so pathetic and embarrassing. Take a look. My political brother, my spiritual brother, my baby brother, Bashir Jones, Councilman Bashir Jones. Give it up for him. Councilman candidate.
candidate for mayor, but again, that is not about life. Things are going my way. So fast forward, election day comes, the polls close, and I was down by six votes. Six votes. Down, but not out. Disappointed, but not devastated. As a child of faith, I've never been shy about my faith. As a child of faith, I said, okay, God. I trust your infinite wisdom. Maybe this isn't for me. And I was actually convinced I would never run for public office again. It's Sunday. Does anybody have a but God in their spirit? But God. So 11 days later, I learned that there were 23 provisional ballots in my race and that I had won by seven votes. Seven votes. Seven votes. Can anybody say seven? Seven. Okay, so that seven has been so significant to me. Bipartisan support, done unanimously. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. So let me just catch you up to speed. Chantel Brown has been lying about Nina Turner. Uh, she begged super PACs to get involved. They've circulated smears about Nina Turner. Chantel Brown has faked endorsements. People who have not endorsed her have called her out for incorrectly saying that they endorsed her in Ohio. And now she's caught blasting fake applause through speakers. I mean, if that's not a fake applause, then maybe they added it afterwards. It seems like it's coming through the speakers there. But obviously, you see, though, there's not a lot of people there because what is she running on? She's like the Ohio version of Pete Buttigieg, but perhaps less substantive with less policies than Pete Buttigieg. So this race is incredibly important. And if there is anyone who is terminally online, who's telling you that it's not worth getting involved to fight for Nina Turner, that person is not a serious person, especially if they claim to be on the left. Nina Turner is someone who we desperately need in Congress. And if you don't think that it's worth dedicating time, resources, and energy fighting for Nina Turner? Well, apparently the uh, super PACs, third-way Democrats, they all disagree with you. They think it's worth getting involved because they view Nina Turner as that big of a threat. A single congressional seat is that important to them. That says a lot. Get involved right now. Donate to Nina Turner. Phone bank. I'll share the link that AOC tweeted. And on top of that, if you live in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio, get on the ground, knock on some doors for Nina Turner. There's going to be a get out the vote effort on July 31st featuring Bernie Sanders, Cori Bush, Keith Ellison. All of the progressives in Congress are coming out, including AOC, to support Nina Turner right now because they see that this is now a seat that's in jeopardy. It looked as if it was going to go to Nina Turner pretty easily, but that's not the case. The dynamic of this race changed. Big money got involved because they didn't want Nina Turner, Turner to win that much. When big money knew it was going to cost millions of dollars to make up a 35-point lead, and they thought that it was worthwhile to make that investment, you know that there's something really special about Nina Turner. So get involved. Support Nina Turner. We have to send Nina Turner to Congress. And the last thing that I'll leave you with is this awesome video of AOC speaking at um, the event this last weekend for Nina Turner. And they cut this into an ad. So that's what you're going to see. One of the first questions they ask is, what do you want? And we're like, what do you mean? Like, we just told you what we want. We want Medicare for all. We want a Green New Deal. We want criminal justice reform. We want to end the war on drugs. We want a living wage at the minimum wage. And they're like, no, really. And we're like, real. We need Nina. I need Nina. Please send me Nina. Oh, I'm just going to put an amen on that. Hello, somebody.